Auto Viewers, and welcome back to the self made Auto Channel. So we're sitting inside the 2003 Chevrolet. It's a 1500-ish van, work van, rotted to no end, and it's rotted bad. Uh, the guy drove it here, and he said um, he's having some electrical problems. He said he plugged in his trailer, and the thing quit, and then it wouldn't start, but it started the next day. And so he drove it here yesterday, and I came out to bring it in today. And this is all it does, it just cranks. Now, I'm working by myself today, and uh, long story short, I went out under the hood, gave her a little sniff of brake clean, and blah, blah, you know, fired it up. And then, of course, it stalled, so that tells me fuel delivery. My next step was look at a wiring diagram. Now, when I turn the key on, I can hear the fuel pump really click on and click off. I don't hear any pumps. I went under there, and I found a chunk of pavement outside, and I beat on the bottom of the tank. That didn't do anything. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, fuel pump, uh, looked at a diagram to see kind of where things run, fuse, stuff like that. But he drove it here, so I don't assume it had a blown fuse. Um, it is heavily rusted. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, needless to say, I looked to see where the ground connection was, and they said it's G400, so the left rear inner frame rail is what it says. So I figured, well, at least I can do with nobody here to help me is check to see if that ground's good. Uh, command the fuel pump on with a scan tool and check that ground you know if the ground's good then well basically i gotta wait for somebody to help me push it inside and get it on a lift and go from there but i'm pretty sure we're gonna get it running with these two items so let me show you what i found and then we'll get it running then we'll get it inside and see what's really wrong with it so i'm not at g400 this is uh the front uh cab mount here uh and there's a there's a ground wire there and then i believe there's a, there's another one in the back which i think is g400 but uh that's irrelevant at this point so i've got the power probe I'm not sure what you guys can see, but I'm just touching that on the frame, and I don't I don't hear it beeping, which doesn't mean a whole lot unless you know how the power probe works. So there has to be uh, a certain amount of resistance or lack of resistance in order for the tool, you know, to, to spout off when you touch a ground. Now this is not a good ground test. Do not use your power probe for testing grounds. However, we're going to use it in this case for testing voltage drop so we can see on this on a tool we've got 0 0.02 volts uh, which we should have you know all zeros even when we turn the fuel pump on but watch this I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on oh what do you know now all of a sudden we've got 11.8 volts at the frame I'll do that again in case you didn't see it I know the winds blowing in there but 11.8 volts no fuel pump so I scraped off a little spot there with my knife we're gonna actually we can just supply the ground with the power probe here oops get up in there get up in there we're gonna supply the ground we're gonna turn the fuel pump back on we'll see if we can hear I don't know what you guys can hear with the wind blowing there she is baby <laughs> so what we're gonna do we're gonna take the old rat tail bastard here I don't know if that's what the proper name of this tool is but we're going to see if we can't shine us up another bit of a shiny spot. And we're going to get the vehicle inside so I don't have to wrestle up somebody to help me push it in. And then we're going to find out what ground wire goes to the frame and why it's missing the ground on the frame. And this could be why when he plugged in his trailer, if he's got that grounded back there somewhere, that could explain why it went kibosh on him. Wow, you picked a really cruddy spot there, didn't you, fella? A uh, good thing to do would be go get some vice grips, clip some vice grips on it. We'll see if we can make temporary use of this here. I'll run that up to the battery. Hold on, folks. Sweet baby. Let's get inside so I don't have to push you. Yeah, this thing is absolutely filthy underneath 161,669 miles on it i don't even know if i could put it on the lift it's rotted so bad what we've got to do we've just got to get it running that's it it ain't here for inspection or anything like that i'm thinking technically Gotta roll that window. I gotta be able to reach in. Ah, the dang window doesn't work over there. This one does. Oh, we see the sparks. Lots of sparks. Definitely messing the ground. 
So I was just looking on the ground distribution diagram. So we've got G106, 104, and 105. So these are going to be our main main battery grounds, which I assume we're missing one of the main ones. Um, uh, right front of engine compartment, which I can see that one. That's on the fender liner. Uh, lower right front of engine block from the engine block to the frame rail. So let's make sure uh, that these are intact. I don't want to go just unhooking a whole bunch of grounds, even though those look really cruddy underneath. Let's just find the one that's bad, fix that, and flush this thing. Right front of engine block to right frame rail. So this, this here is the main ground on the right front of the engine block. And it's supposed to be piggybacked with another one, which I see is gone. Oh, but I see somebody added. Okay, this must be a little add-on feature right here, this one. That one right there. Well, fancy. So, <laughs> so there's your problem, lady. You got a bad, bad ground strap. Well, that was easy. Like I said, I think the one that, sorry for the wobbly video here. The one for the fuel pump is actually that one right there. All right, when we were outside doing the video, we were up here in this area. So the whole frame rail is not grounded. <laughs> ah, she's a beaut. Lucky for this fella. I happen to have some battery cable here that I think will work just well. Get the insulation cut on it. Not cutting too many strands of the wiring. There we go. Lost a few strands, but not too many. Then, whoa, fella! I've got this eyelet here that we can stick on there. What we'll do is we'll crimp it on and we'll solder it. Just to be on the safe side. Here, see if we can't get one end of it to crimp over. Without getting a lot of whiskers out of it. I'm gonna get a few whiskers out, I imagine. I always do. There's gonna be just a couple. We might have to shave it. I'm gonna solder it anyhow, so I'll get this side to fold over on us. And a couple, two or three whiskers hanging out. Not bad, not bad. We'll stick it in the vise. Make sure we have good contact. And we do. There's about, oh, half or dozen or so wires on the outside of the crimp. Which is not a huge deal, because like I say, we're going to put some solder on it. We'll just make sure they're flattened right down. I think our wire gauge is a little heavier than it needs to be, but... have a good bond there. I'm going to cool it off. So that's soldered on. And we'll see if we can't get these to curl over nicely. They probably won't. They just crimp onto the insulation. Not that it's going to go anywhere or anything, but I'm just going to give it that finished appearance a little bit. Let's see, I don't know if I have any heat shrink this size here or not. The heat shrink supply is getting low. Like I said, this is more aesthetics than anything in this situation because, like I said, we did solder it. So we can kind of leave that like that. I'm going to have to see how long we need it. And I'll see if I have some heat shrink. We're, we'll put uh, 
fluid film on it anyways, but just in case. It didn't all I had is red. And that'll send the wrong message to somebody. Probably not, but I can see from the, for this case, there we go. I think we'll, just, uh, we'll put it on and spray it. Looks like I can hook it on right up on the left side of the engine, go right down to a mount. And I think it'll be okay. So we'll do it again on this side or on this terminal. Try not to get too many whiskers sticking out of there. They will spray the crap out of this. Fire, fire. Now we have to do what we should have done first just to make sure the eyelet was the appropriate size for the hole. So we're going to try to do this without wadding everything up. Right, that one's big enough now because we're going on like some 12 millimeter bolts. Stick this one in here and see if we can do this. These are pretty soft. I think they're, they're copper. Be the same size. Now we are. Fancy. I'm thinking for ease of access, we can go right here off the power steering, which goes right into the block. Whoa, man down. And then there's the engine mount right below it that's, you know, part of the cross member, part of the frame. I think that'll be okay. Let me see this. Uh, this old girl ain't got much life left in it, I'll tell you that, folks. If I'm warning you that your car's rusty, I'll be warned. That's all I work on. Oh, she's a long one. All right, I'm going to clean up the face of that. Actually, that baby's pretty shiny up there. Uh, let's get our wire. Go get our wire. She'll be right out of harm's way up here. Don't you worry. Lots of places you can go. I'm not going to try to put it back in the original mounting spot because you'd have to remove the AC compressor and everything else. And then I'm going to twist her around down. Right down here on the frame, we'll make sure it's out of the way of the steering linkage and everything. Ah, now that you can see where I'm going, never mind. I took and pulled the one nut out of the uh, lower mount for the engine mount, which hooks you know right to the frame. So we'll get that sprayed. I'll spray that upper one, and now we should be good. Yeah, baby. ABS lights on. I see the ABS pumps unhooked underneath. All right, we're back up and running. Get my little dongle out of here. There we go. We're good to go. Well, there you have it, folks. A uh, couple quick, simple tests. I was thankful that I didn't have to wait for somebody to come help me push it in uh, or try to run it in on brake clean, stuff like that. A couple quick parking lot checks. was able to you know, kind of get to the root cause of the problem pretty quick. Uh, I did have a clue, like I say, when he told me that he plugged in his trailer and then the car quit. You know, knowing that uh, his trailer system on this is just, 
you know, wire taps into the tail lights and, you know, ground on the frame and, you know, that, that's it. It's nothing, no modules, nothing fancy, anything like that. So they shouldn't be related except plug it in a trailer, overloaded the ground circuit, which is hooked to the frame. So that's kind of what, you know, got the wheels spinning in my head. Well, yeah, we're dealing with no fuel pressure. He drove it here. So for whatever reason, you know, he had enough connection or the fuel pump at that time found enough paths to ground through other items. Uh, that it ran good enough to get it here. So I didn't think we were dealing with a power issue, uh, anything like that, and just, you know, uh, I don't wanna say lucky catch, but it was a lucky catch. You know, we checked the ground on the frame rail where the fuel pump hits. I noticed, you know, nine volts, 12 volts, whatever it was, like, oh, okay, you're done, that's it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you guys can learn a little bit about uh, that or learn from this. I think we've done other videos where voltage drop has been an issue. I think there was another one on a Chevrolet, like a Tahoe or something that we did at one point the graded brown braided ground strap under the hood from the I believe it was from the firewall to the frame it was making the gauges go wonky and stuff like that so uh, voltage drop absolutely necessary power probe is a great tool for it because we have our tip voltage and we have our source voltage all on the same tool so we can make our our voltage drop calculations or make some for you really um, but don't be reliant on the beeper you know if you hook it up and it beeps it doesn't mean anything just read the book that comes with your power probe and it'll tell you why it beeps and when it beeps. Uh, it does not mean it has a good ground. It was a good indicator on this one, um, you know, because even though it was showing near ground, you know, 0.02 volts, it still didn't beep because, you know, it's when it was, its resistance was too, I think it has to be less than 10 ohms to make it beep on a ground, but resistance is not a good ground check ever for anything. Uh, you can only do voltage drop when there's current flow. So that's why when we turned the fuel pump on, our ground went from bad to really bad. So uh, just keep that in mind. Lots of great videos out there on voltage drop. But uh, while you're down there, why don't you drop on down to that comment box and leave a question, comment, criticism, concern. While you're down there, ring the bell and subscribe. I pointed too early. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.